Jack Waltham is an auctioneer who works at Hexham Auction Mart. If you want to know more about Jack Waltham, then listen to the rest of this interview. Welcome to Interesting Facts. So I'm here with Jack Walton of Hexham Auction Mart. Today we're going to find a little bit more out about Jack and what he does and uh, also um, a few of his favourite things. Jack, if you could tell us um, a little bit about how old you are, uh, where you were born, which schools you went to and which colleges, etc. Well, great to have you here today, Robert. Uh, yeah, I'm Jack Walton, 25 years old. Uh, look about 95, always been a bit of an old man, but absolutely love it, will never change the way I am. I uh, went to school up here in Northumberland for a lot of years, and then my mum and dad moved down to Worcestershire, where I went to secondary school, and then went to uh, a school called Hanley Castle High School, which I absolutely loved, and then I went to the Royal Agriculture University at Sirencester for three years before moving back to Northumberland. Northumberland was always my home, and I always knew that I would be coming back to the north. So we're going to ask you a few more light-hearted questions before we get into the in-depth stuff. Um, just to give us a bit of a flavour of uh, what you're about. If you could tell me, please, um, what is your favourite music? Not really a music man. I do enjoy a good dance when the old classics come on, uh, more like Con Eileen or Islands in the Stream or something like that. Someone that's a bit more about it, none of this modern rubbish. Uh, I can't stand these modern nights out when they're just full of music that you actually can't even hear yourself think. So if you have one, your favourite colour and why? Not really something that I ever really thought about, to be honest, a favourite colour. Um, probably something like royal blue, uh, just reminds me of my grand, uh, mum's mum. She's always had that sort of colour, a nice blue colour. Your favourite motor vehicle, if you could have any motor vehicle that, that you could? Me and cars don't get on very well. Uh, as long as the car goes from A to B, I'm very happy. Uh, I used to have a fantastic Dacia Duster, and you can't beat the Duster. Um, but now I've got a Toyota RAV and it's just grand. I don't need anything like a Ferrari. I think if I got into something like a Ferrari, I wouldn't probably be able to get out. Your favourite food? Probably a proper Sunday roast. You can't beat a Sunday roast. Bit of roast beef, all the trimmings, roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, mashed turnip, carrots, peas, gravy. I don't think you can go far wrong there. And your favourite uh, drink? Favourite drink. I'm quite well known for rum and cokes. I can drink rum and coke all night, every night, if I was allowed. Do you believe in ghosts? Do I believe in ghosts? <laughs> nah, uh, not something, again, I've ever really thought about, and probably not, no. So you've never seen a ghost? I've seen plenty of funny sights in my ring on a Friday here at Hexham, but I don't think ghosts are one of them. Do you prefer rugby or football? I think I better say rugby with my dad being an international rugby player. I better say rugby. I do enjoy a bit of football and the tune are doing very well at the minute. But I think rugby is definitely where my heart is. What's the first thing you would buy if you won big on the national lottery? Oh, first thing I'd buy if I won big on the national lottery, probably pay my mortgage off. But probably most of all, I'd probably buy a good racehorse. And what is your favourite border fine art? Border fine art. I do enjoy border fine art. Probably uh, either the one of the of a livestock auctioneer working away, but it'd have to be with a Suffolk tub in the ring, or just a good Suffolk family. And you can't beat a Suffolk sheep. Did you have a childhood hero? My childhood hero would be my grandfather. Um, from both a farming sense and an auctioneering sense, Michael Walton, very well known in Northumberland and across the country for breeding uh, pedigree stock in mainly Suffolk sheep and was a very well known um, auctioneer across the country and he was a man that I always looked up to uh, and I'd still class as my hero today. So leading on to the next question, which you've already partly answered, who got you interested in auctioneering? Grandfather? It would have to be grandfather, yeah. It's been in the family a long time between my grandfather and my father was an auctioneer before he went into rugby when it was an amateur sport. Uh, my uncle, uh, Andrew, he's an auctioneer currently as well. My earliest memory of going to a sort of sale would be a sale at Carlisle at Christmas. My grandfather picked me up from Newcastle from school. Uh, we went across to Carlisle to the Twilight Sale, uh, the Inland Texel Sale in December. And that would be one of my first memories of going to a mart and thinking, goodness me, this is what I want to do. Um, and learning from there and learning from Grandpa. During the time at Hexham Mart, 
uh, so far. It's no secret that Trevor Simpson has mentored you in the early years. Um, do you hope to achieve what Trevor's achieved at Hexham and do your 50 years? Yeah, Hexham, it, it, it's, it's in me, it's in my blood, really. Um, Trevor and Brian Rogerson this year both celebrated 50 years here at the market. Um, and they've both been very instrumental in my early career so far. I sat in an office with Trevor for two years before he retired and learning off Trevor, his unique ways and mannerisms and how he sells and how he deals with customers is just truly fantastic. And I know he's always going to be there on the end of the phone regardless of what situation I'm in, if I'm in trouble, if I need some advice, if anything like that, give Trevor a ring. Trevor will always be there. And it's great that Trevor still likes to come to some of our special sales as well, jump in the car with me and go on a few farms. What do you consider your greatest strength? My greatest strength, good question. Again, something you don't often think about is your strength. You probably think more about your weaknesses. But as a strength, I'd like to think that one of my greatest strengths is my pupil skills. Um, I like to think that I can be on a docks in the morning and talk to everyone just the same. It doesn't matter if you're selling one sheep or you're selling 5,000 sheep in a day. Treat everybody the same and be, always treat people how you want to be treated yourself. And that's what I try and aim for. And what do you consider is your weakness? Probably one of my biggest weaknesses is always there's loads of weaknesses, I would say. But one of my weaknesses is not being able to say no. So whenever you get asked to do something, you just say yes. And that can often be detriment to what you're actually doing. Uh, always just saying yes and trying to please everyone. And I've learned very quickly in this job, you can't please everybody. Um, and probably another weakness is we take things to heart. And as an auctioneer, it's hard to take. You can't take everything to heart because... If you took everything to heart, you'd be out of the job within seconds. Um, it's, not, it's a grueling world, but it's a great world as well. What's your most memorable auctioneering highlight so far? Well, I've only been here at Hexham three and a half years. Came here straight from university. Um, I've got lots of highlights, everything from I, I just enjoy getting into that box on a Friday morning at nine o'clock, sitting there in my rostrum for six, seven hours, selling all day. I absolutely love that. But my highlight would have to be down at Bill Fells this year. Oh, last year, selling uh, the Blue Face Leicester, uh, Shield and the second in the ring, uh, with 26,000 guineas. Uh, that has to be a highlight of my career. I think a lot of people, three years into your career, if you can sell some for that, you'd be very happy. So going on to the Blue Face Leicesters in particular, um, with the amount of trees that are being planted on uh, uplands and etc., do you fear for the future of the sheep industry or the blue faced Leicesters in particular because they crossed with the Hillbreeds to produce the mule? I think there'll always be a need for blue faced Leicester because the mule is the heart of the sheep industry. Um, I've been lucky enough to be living down south as well and without the mule in the south, farmers wouldn't know what to do, I would say. So there'll always be a need for the mule. So I think the blue faced Leicester will always be a need for that. There's also been a great revolution of the Cheviot mule, um, which is also now given a re generating the traditional blue face letters more um, but I, yeah I, th I can see there being a need for this uh, blue face letter sheep industry as a whole i think we're in funny times especially with like you said with the tree planting i think it's a big worry that they're planting good land they're not planting bad land um, and that is getting rid of a lot of farmers because money talks um, and i think unfortunately our government at the minute don't understand it's not trying to be political, talking about any parties, but I don't think the government as a whole on both sides of the house understand the need of farmers and what we actually produce. And leading on to the amount of New Zealand lamb which comes into the UK every year, the powers of be say it's to keep people eating lamb. But what's your opinion on that? I think it's fantastic that we all try and encourage people to buy lamb, British lamb more importantly. Currently we sit here at the end of January recording this and our country is absolutely full of hogs. Uh, a lot of the big farmers have got plenty of sheep and lamb left around so there should be no reason why we need to be importing any New Zealand lamb. It's yes, China have said no to New Zealand, but why have we said yes? If the fields aren't full of lambs, then you can import it. If the fields are full of lambs and hogs, don't import it. It's simple as that. But unfortunately, like I've said before, I don't believe that the 
uh, government understand uh, the realities of what they say and given no tariffs on any of this stock coming in, how can it be cheaper to buy a New Zealand lamb in this country on the supermarkets than it is to buy New Zealand lamb in New Zealand? How do you think social media platforms have improved the promotion of sheep or not improved the promotion of uh, farming in general in the last 10 years? I would say social media has a great impact on our job. We can uh, advertise things and private sales and our sales are coming up, videos very quickly onto Facebook, etc. Um, it encourages people to look at them and they can see what we're going to come in and saves them having to travel a long distance, etc. I don't think videos and social media has improved farming dramatically because I don't think we have a good enough voice. I think that the vegans and our activists have a far bigger voice which encourages our youngsters of today to become vegans and activists. Everyone has a right and everyone has a, uh, their own choices to make whether they become vegans, activists, etc. But I think social media is playing a big part in it at the minute. Uh, and regardless of whether you are a vegan, uh, you always need a farmer. It doesn't matter if you're a meat eater, a vegan, a vegetarian, the one thing you'll always need is a farmer. And with the introduction in recent years of more online sales, do you think this will affect the future of the live auction mount? I'm not a massive believer in online sales. Um, I think there's a place for it, but for the stock that I sell on a weekly basis, either the fat market or the store market, I wouldn't want to be faffing on with the online sales. I think if I was wanting to go and buy stock, I would want to be there and then being able to feel them, be able to see them up in personal. You know, to, to watch on a computer screen, everything can look big on a computer screen. It doesn't matter what it is in life. And I think that's very true when it comes to these livestock. It's very clever how you can place a lot of these cameras around your ring to make things look good. But it's actually when it comes back out at the end, I think that's the worry. Just moving on then to agricultural shows, What, which one is your favourite agricultural show and why? I love agricultural shows, it's been in my blood, my mum um, runs agricultural shows and has done for a lot of years now. My favourite agricultural show would probably be Glendale. Glendale show has been in our family, the Walton family's history for decades and decades, generations after generations, and it's a show that I look forward to. I've only ever missed one in my lifetime so far. Uh, that was because I had an exam at school. If I hadn't had that, I'd have been there. But I love the, all the local shows and big shows. I've commentated a lot of shows around the country. Uh, I'm on committees for quite a few shows as well. So after doing the auctioneering job for a few years, what's the best piece of advice that you would now give to your younger self at, say, six years, seven years ago? My advice that I give any young auctioneer is be the same with everybody, treat everybody the same and be straight. No need to be acting differently with different people, treat everybody the same, go on the docks first thing in the morning, see the farmers, speak to your buyers before the sale, treat everyone the same throughout the sale and help after the sale. Be the first one in the morning, be the last one to leave, help the girls in the office and the boys in the office, help the boys and girls in the yard and they'll always help you. So that's great advice from Jack. And now we're going to um, just find out a little bit more light-hearted things about him. So if you had a choice, would it be Victoria sponge or fruitcake? Fruitcake. My granny Anne makes a fantastic fruitcake and it'd have to be a fruitcake. And you might laugh at this one, but somebody asked me this the other day and I had to think about it. Which goes on your fish and chips first, salt or vinegar? Definitely salt. I don't like vinegar. What fears do you have? Do you have any fears? Rats. I hate rats. There's nothing worse at lambing time when you're going and mucking out a pen and you go into the muck midden and it's just a rat runs across the top. Yeah, just sends shivers down my spine. Do you prefer a lad's night out or a quiet night in? A bit of both. Good mixture. I enjoy a good night out in a country pub with your mates, having a few pints, a good pub grub. But going out for a club doesn't just always do it for me. And what do you do to relax? Horse racing is probably my biggest hobby. Uh, I go all over the um, country horse racing and absolutely love it. So is your glass half full or half empty? It's always half full, I would say. And what do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? question you hear asked so many times and I've never ever thought about it. I think there's far more uh, intelligent people that would come up with the answer to this. 
but I would presume the chicken. But I goodness only knows. Could be the egg. So if you were stuck on a desert island, what two things, apart from food and water, would you want? Some friends. I could easily go without social media and your phones and things like that. But I think friends and family are probably your most important things in life. If you could compare yourself to any animal, which would it be and why? Chimpanzee. I'm a big fella. I sit in a box on a Friday, probably a bit like a chimpanzee. I don't scratch my arse or anything like that. But I think my aunt, my great aunt, has always sent me a card of a chimpanzee every birthday. And I think that's because she probably thinks I look a little bit like a chimpanzee. So if you were having a dinner party, who would be the four guests you would invite? Famous or otherwise, dead or alive? Well, I do love a good dinner party. I think, first of all, I know he has sadly died, but I would have invited Prince Philip, because I just think he would say something completely outrageous all night, and it would be absolutely fantastic. Trevor Simpson, because we always nicknamed him the Silver Fox, because he enjoyed the Silver Fox gin I used to pour him quite regularly, not in work time, of course. My mother, because... Uh, She's always been there for us all uh, and kept us all going. And I'd probably have to invite my grandfather as well because, like I said before, without him, I wouldn't be here today. Well, thanks very much, Jack. I hope everybody will enjoy listening to this because I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, making it. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you much.